So before I even start, let's talk about the settings, right? So when you go and choose your character, you go over here and after you created your map or your random map or your seed. So let's see, we got a random map. So let's say hardcore, right? Okay, so we have our map right here and now we're talking about modifiers. So if you want to play hardcore, just select hardcore up here. But keep in mind that this is not, this is not the most difficult setting, right? Then your map should look like this, it would say Hardcore, and you can change that to anything that you want at any time. But keep in mind, as I said, that the most difficult setting is this one, where you have much more raid rate and no portals. No map, no portals. The combat and the death penalty will stay the same. Resource rate, feel free to adjust it to your liking because this is only the grind, if you like the grind in the game. But this is the most difficult setting, Immersive Plus. On number 10 we have Resources. Now, I cannot stress this enough, but so many new players, when they just spawn into the world, they start going out here and venture into the woods and start punching trees, just like this. And keep smashing their keys until they run out of stamina. My guys, you are not playing Minecraft. This is Valheim. So, the game actually gives you your first resources right here where you spawn. So you find a lot of a bunch of stones, a bunch of wood right here. Just run around this lovely circle and you're gonna find a lot of resources and a lot of enemies, of course. So, right there, is, there you have your raspberries. There you have your mushrooms, right here. And right off the bat, you can craft either your hammer or if you find one more stone, you can craft your stone axe. Resources are easy to find around this, around the stones, right? If the graylings are giving you trouble, just equip your torch and they will start leaving. And because they're afraid of fire. So shove that delicious food in your belly and you can start crafting your stone axe and now you should be just fine, ready to go and ready to start your adventure into the world of Valheim. On number 9 we have the rested bonus. So if for some reason you decide to run around and lose all your stamina on hardcore or start chopping trees, bushes and your stamina is depleted, you will see that regeneration of the stamina is really slow. One thing that most players dodge is the rested bonus, which is a total must have, especially on hardcore. So slap down a fire, use some wood and start resting. For some reason, right here we're not protected, but you can sit down and you'll see to my top right corner of the screen that the character is resting. If you sit down pressing the X button, you're going to get the rested bonus in a second it takes around 20 seconds to get the rested bonus but don't go away into the wilderness especially on hard mode without this bonus now if you go right here you're going to see that the active effects are from resting health regeneration plus 200 percent if you're staying by the fire seminar regeneration plus 300 percent and ether regeneration plus 300 percent now, if you go away from the fire, you're only, you will only have the rested bonus, which, which still does 50 health regen, 100 stamina and ether regeneration for 8 minutes. You can increase your rested duration from the bonus if you decide to improve your comfort levels in the house. On number 8, we have tools. Now, your basic tools, your hammer is the one you get when you first start into the game and you craft it with three wood and two stone. If you happen to find one of these structures, which is this one near the boss stones, we haven't left the boss stones, you don't actually need to build a house, you just slap a workbench down here and start getting your most important tool, which is the hoe. You can also repair your items fast and craft your flint axe, because with this you will cut down woods, wood even faster, right? You can upgrade them later and if you have so happen to find such a house, you can start repairing it and make it your shelter, your temporary shelter, right, for the hard times ahead. 
On number seven, we have the base. Now, a few things to keep in mind when it comes to your base. Start building a simple structure if you don't have the time. Start building a complex structures if you do have the time, right? I'm not gonna bother right myself with a complex one right now, but the main idea with your house, it's important to have it near a body of water, especially if you're gonna play hardcore Valheim. You're gonna do a lot of boat driving around and you're gonna sail a lot and you want to have a nice port right down there you want to have dark forest close to you but don't build your house too close to the dark forest because then you're gonna have a lot of monsters knocking at your door day and night so we found a nice patch right here on this seed i'm gonna leave you in the the name of the seed in the description so this is the perfect spot on the seed you were having a nice spot on the plains we have a lot of boar, a lot of wood right there, but we are so close to the actual black forest where we're going to do a lot of grind for tin, copper and bronze lately. So keep in mind, choose your permanent base location carefully. On number six, we have roads. Now remember that I've talked a lot about the importance of this magic tool, especially in hard mode, the hoe. You're going to want to use this to create roads. Right, so there are a few ways that you can use this. You can use this to path in the ground, but the radius is smaller, or you can use this to level the ground, which will help you run your cart on the road later easier. So once you create a road, nice road, now you're gonna know where you're headed. So this road goes to the black forest, right? I'm gonna create right here a quick road to my uh, future, future docks, right? So I want this road to go down there to the river where we're gonna grab our resources later on from the boat. And this is how you navigate, because no map, you can press M as much as you want, so no map on this mode, just the simple roads. So you're gonna take great care of your roads, keep them clean, and they will sure help you a lot on hardcore. On number five, we have the signs. Now, the signs are excessively important in your experience, in your hard work, hardcore experience, because you want to build them rightfully so. And you can use them actually to indicate your direction. So now they're excessively important. Just write the color of your sign. So if you want to color them white, write like this. Color white, I'm gonna press E and I'm gonna say boat here, right? right. And I'm gonna create a nice arrow that will indicate the fact that this is our port, or docks. This is the road to the docks, right? And one more right here. Started to be foggy all of a sudden. One more right here to... It's so hard to navigate in that menu. To the black forest. So black forest right here. Oopsies. Right, black forest. Okay, that looks great. Now I know that this road will take me to Black Forest. Now keep in mind that at the end of the road, where you want to have the end of the road, you have to place another sign that directs you back towards the, your home. So you know, like this, this is how you navigate and you will never get lost as long as you have good roads and good signs and correct signs on every single road. On number four, we have the food. Keep in mind that on Hardcore it's very important what you are eating. So if you're gonna play a warrior, right, you're gonna need two health or maybe even three health items. I'm running on this particular one, I'm running the cooked deer meat, the cooked boar meat and the honey. I can't attach the honey on the table for some reason. Uh, they won't go on the item stand, but you got the point. So two health items, right, deer meat, two health items and one stamina item. This is how I like to play. But feel free to improvise, you can use the neck tail to replace the honey right here and then you're gonna have a lot of more HP. And another advice for you is never let your food go past 50% of its time and duration right here. Because your stats, the stats that you gain from the food will be diminished by 50%. And you don't wanna have, instead of having 35 health from here, you're gonna have around 16 or 17 so keep an eye on the time of your health down here because this is your main stat number three we have the darkness now a lot of cool things can happen in the darkness 
Like this one. I'm being chased by two skeletons right outside the base. You don't want to stay outside after the dark. Because you're getting a debuff called... Cold. <laughs> which is ironically cold. Cold. Which diminishes your health and stamina regeneration during the night. So fighting outside... Oh, this is gonna be bad. Is something that you don't want, especially in hardcore. You've seen how much damage I just took right there from a simple skeleton. And this is something that you don't need right now, especially at the early stage of the game. So don't stay out at night because only bad things can happen outside during the night. On number two, we have the effects. So you are playing hard mode, right? <laughs> Most effects, like the poison I get from the beehives or the fire, can really cause you a lot of trouble, especially on hard mode. Like you see, my health just plummeted down to dangerous levels just by going near a beehive or stepping into a fire, especially in the beginning when you have no armor. Easiest way to take out the beehive is by using a bow. Now, if that fails, you can also use your hammer, break down the structures. Oops. Create a workbench, <laughs> break down the structures, right, around that beehive. And then the beehive will just fall down and you can take the loot. And now we can craft beehives and have a lot of precious honey. So keep in mind the negative effects are much more punishing on hardcore. So don't let yourself affected by them. And tip number one, we have the boss stones. Now, keep in mind, on hard mode or hardcore, we have no map, obviously. And how do you imagine that we're gonna find the bosses? Unless you happen to stumble upon one of the boss stones by boss stones, like uh, the boss altars, by mistake, you're gonna have to use the boss stones, right? Like these ones. Now, the way you were gonna do this on hard mode is a bit tricky. So press E on the stone and don't move your mouse. You are now, you can see the camera directly panned to the right. So I'm gonna hold it right here because this is the direction of the first boss, which is the Ikethir, right? So if you hold, if you press E on the boss stone, he's gonna show you multiple, right? Look, there's the second one, multiple boss stones. There are three. This is the first one that we got. So if I go right in this direction, let me show you a quick tip. So we go keep going in that, that, this direction right here. We're going to eventually, whoopsies, we're going to eventually stumble across the boss stone, which is right here. So we went from that direction and we landed up here. Now using your hoe, you can create a path to find this place easier, but this is how you do it. No matter if you are in the black forest or swamp, don't use the boss stones in the dungeons because they will have the same effect where you can't see actually where the boss is. You're gonna have a lot of boss stones outside, right, near structures. So use those to find the bosses. And that's it, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you appreciate all these tips. These tips are gathered from my experience of the hardcore and these are only for the matters with many more to come for the Black Forest and the Swamp in the near future. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye bye.